Hello again everyone and welcome back to the channel. In today's video, as you can see, we're going to be taking another outing in the Beechcraft King Air 350i. This of course though isn't the default aircraft, instead today we're going to be taking a look at Black Square's next instalment in their Steam Gauge Overhaul series. And the product that we'll be putting through its paces in this video is of course the Analog King Air. We looked at the Analog Caravan here on the channel not too long ago and whilst I very much enjoyed that, it's the King Air that I've been really looking forward to personally. So I've selected a pretty special route for our flight today. We are currently on the ground at Milford Sound on New Zealand's South Island and we're going to be making the short but certainly very spectacular hop over the mountains up towards Queenstown. Just like have stated that what you'll be seeing here today is more or less a finished version of the product so I am at liberty to either preview or review the aircraft. As such we are generally going to be reviewing the King Air here as we go. I will just caveat that though somewhat since of course Sim Update 10 has just released and I was using Sim Update 10 at the time of recording. So as ever with a sim update there is of course the potential for a couple of issues to be thrown up, although I can't say that I noticed really any throughout the flight. As with the caravan the King Air certainly focuses pretty heavily on its systems modelling. To that end we are going to be carrying out a full cold and dark start in the aircraft as well as a full flight. And as ever I've tried to run things as accurately as I can although there will be some concessions made for the sim. And as ever not being a real world King Air pilot I'm sure there will be one or two mistakes along the way. Anyway, I do hope you all enjoy the video. If you do, please consider giving it a like and subscribing to the channel. Again, a pretty special routing for you today in what I think is a really excellent add-on. So let's head for the cockpit of the King Air, we'll get ourselves buckled up and ready to go. So welcome to the cockpit of the really rather excellent Black Square Analog Beechcraft King Air 350i. We are currently on the ground, as mentioned, at Milford Sound, a really beautiful part of the world. The en route sector should be pretty stunning as well. So hopefully today we're going to have a really fun outing in a really excellent add-on. With that in mind then we'll start running through our before start checks. It's going to take quite some time in the video today as again the King Air 350 is a fairly complex product. So first things first the battery master can go on. Parking brake is set. Bus sensor is set to normal. Inverters are both off. Avionics Master Power will leave off for the time being. Auto Feather is off. Engine Ignitions are both off. Engine Anti-Ice can go on. And you can hear there the actuators wearing away, so some quite nice additional sounds to the aircraft, although the sound set is still broadly the default King Air sound set. Just waiting here till we see the engine anti-ice enunciators illuminated. Interestingly, the anti ice seems to stay on throughout the takeoff, comes off during the climb. I gather that the anti ice system is a little bit like an inertial separator. So we have both the left and the right engine anti ice enunciators illuminated. Beacon light can go on, nav lights are on, transponder is set off. Fuel quantity and balance showing just below a thousand pounds in each main tank there. The flight plan calls for two thousand pounds of fuel and the tanks are both balanced. Cabin signs. We've got the fasten seat belts and no smoking signs on. Port meter will leave in the CTR position. There's no ground power for the start today. Power levers are set to idle. Prop levers are set to fully feathered. And the fuel levers are set to cut off. Lateral oxygen system will pull the handle. The lateral manual dropout, the handle is in. Pitch trim. Electrical trim can go on. Rudder boost is on. And for the cabin altitude, we're not climbing above 11,000 feet for our flight today, so we'll leave the cabin altitude as is. Next for the vent blower, we'll set that to auto. Bleed air valves can go to on with environment off. Cabin temperature mode is selected off. And we are cleared for the start, so the avionics master, once again, just confirm that is off. Doors are closed. We'll note the time. We'll be starting the left hand engine first, so the auto ignition can go to arm and the engine starter on the left can go on. So monitoring the run up here, waiting till we're through 18% on the M1 before we introduce the fuel and monitoring the ITT. Just coming up on our 18%, the left condition lever can go to low idle. And you can see we do get a slight spike there in ITT during the start, I gather that's accurate. The engine's spooling up nicely, the 
Time taken to spool up seems to be pretty accurate. Worth noting as well there on the condition lever, they're gated so they're easy to operate. Gated into the low idle and high idle position. So the engine is stable. The low fuel pressure and low oil pressure enunciator lights have both gone out. We'll get the left generator on and we'll just briefly go to reset. Auto ignition can go off, the starter can go off. And just checking our generator output. That's checked. So we're going to be starting the right hand engine here off the left hand engine since again we don't have any external power, just cancel the master warning there. So GPU has been disconnected, the left condition lever can go to high idle. And we'll just wait here for the engine to stabilise. Again, really nice rate in terms of spool up times. So the left engine is stable. And again, we'll just carry out the same process here on the right. So engine auto ignition is on. Right starter is on. Monitoring the ITT and the M1. And once more, just waiting to up through 18% before we introduce the fuel. There's 18%, that also seems to be more or less max motoring. Condition lever can go to low idle. Once more, we have that spike in ITT. And just waiting on the right hand engine here to stabilise. So we do have two good starts. Once again, the low fuel pressure, low oil pressure enunciators are both extinguished. Right generator can go on. And according to the checklist, we just need to reset the left gen there as well, having started the engine. Auto ignition is off. Starter is off. And for the voltmeter, right generator output looks good. Back to the left gen. And again, just cancelling the master warning. So if the off starts, left condition lever can go back to low idle. Prop lever can go fully forward. There's fully forward. So just waiting there for the prop RPMs to come up. According to my checklist, we're supposed to see above 1050 on the RPMs. Seems in the black square we idle around 700 RPM. I'm not sure whether that's something to do with an engine variant or a prop variant, but anyway, slight disparity there in numbers. Master caution there for the battery charge, that should now be charging as we have the generators online. So prop RPM is checked, inverters are both on, Everlink's master is on, DME is on, taxi lights are on, nav lights are on, Recognition lights are on and the tail flood lights are on. Prop for the de-ice will set to auto. Fuel vent, both left and right heats can go on. And same for the pitot heats and the still warning heat. Master panel lights are on. Voltmeter bus selector will go to TPL feed. Instrument emergency lights are on and we can now start setting up the radios for our flight. We'll keep an eye on that battery charge there. Hopefully the battery is currently charging. We'll see the caution there extinguished momentarily. So we'll initialize our GTNXI. Worth noting as always, this is the TDS GTNXI. It's a payware mod, so this doesn't come with the aircraft as standard. TAS system test OK. So TOS test is complete. We'll just reset our messages there. We don't need the comm radios for our flight today. We've already got the Queenstown VOR tuned up there on a frequency of 113.6. So we can start setting up our flight plan. On the ground, as I say, currently at Milford Sound. And we are initially going to be tracking out towards waypoint Sierra Papa Oscar November 2. New Zealand 1141, contact approach 125.6. After that, it'll be direct to waypoint Ignet, India, Gulf, November, Echo, Tango. Then on towards waypoint Abdam, 
which is uniform Bravo Delta Alpha Mike. And from there, we'll be joining potentially onto the Ubdam 3 Alpha arrival. We'll see how we go, though. We should be visual today. That should take us over the water. We'll just send down across the lake inbound towards Queenstown. So for now, we'll just put in Queenstown to the destination, which is November, Zulu, Quebec. November. So that's all correctly in. Just come onto the train page. We'll go to the menu. We're going to inhibit tours for the departure here. We've got pretty high terrain around us throughout the departure itself. That battery charge caution has now extinguished. That's good to see. So initial track is going to be 290. We'll set that on our course bar. As with most add-ons in the sim, it does take a little time to scroll through and it didn't seem to me as though shift actually tended to speed things up in the aircraft. Anyone else arrival, runway 32, flight level 410, velocity 733. That's 290, same on the heading bug, we're going to be departing off runway 29. You might just caught there, you'll see that the prop anti-ice is currently working. Everything is modelled really nicely in the aircraft, I have to say. That's in auto currently, so it seems to periodically de-ice the prop. So heading bug is set. So comm radios set, nav radios are set, transponder can go to standby. Just a little bit fiddly there on the click spot. ADF not required, weather radar is currently in standby, we'll leave it in standby for the time being. For the flaps, we'll just cycle those. So going to approach flap and landing flap. And the flaps are checked, they can go up again for the time being. Pitch trim is checked and set. EADI and EFIS modes. So we'll leave the flight director off for the time being. Once again, we do have the heading bug and the CDI bar set. We're going to be climbing up to flight level 110. We're actually going to stay on the QNH today, so 11,000 feet. And once again, we do have our GTNXI set up. Nav source. We want uh, GPS for the departure. Interestingly there, that's not actually switching over. Okay, just a slight misclick there on my part. So we have GPS, which is what we want. And again, we have 290 there on the course bar. Autopilot is off. And again, we do have the altitude alert armed. Your damper is off. Bleed air valves can both go to open. Vent blower is set to auto. Camera temperature mode selector can go to auto. And we can now request taxi, and we'll make our way out towards runway 29. Okay, so we are now down at the holding point for runway 29. Overall, the King Air taxi is pretty nicely, although it did still pick up quite a bit of speed, even with the power levers at idle and the condition levers there in the low idle detent. I'm not entirely sure whether or not that's true to life of the aircraft. I've not flown a uh, turboprop, let alone the King Air, but I did find myself having to ride the brakes a little. Anyway, for the before takeoff checks, flaps can go to approach. And the flaps are checked. Auto feather we can arm. Enunciators are checked. We've just got the left and right engine anti-ice as discussed. The prop pitch will come good in just a moment's time. Engine auto ignitions are both armed. Landing lights can go on. Taxi lights can come off. Same for the recognition lights. Strobe lights can go on. And the tail flood light can go off. Transponder can go to out. Flight instruments are checked. Part brake can come off. We are clear for the takeoff. It's all clear on final. And all clear upwind. Again, back at idle power here currently, so the aircraft, as you can see, will pick up speed. And we do have a little bit of an issue here with the uh, scenery, so we're just going to split the difference. We'll fly straight down the middle of the two centre lines here. Holding the aircraft on the brakes, we do have a slight tailwind here off runway 29, but we're going to take that in preference to departing out towards the east there with the high terrain. 
So the takeoff checks, condition levers can go to high idle. Velocity 733, information India current at Gold Coast. Three changes when you're ready. Slightly more abrupt change there now in the engine parameters. I'm not sure whether or not that's accurate. Heading bug is aligned with the runway. We're showing a heading there of about 280. And 280 there on the compass. Brakes will hold. We're going to keep the aircraft on the brakes as we come up to take off power again with that slight tailwind. And the runway not being all that long here in uh, Milford Sound. And we're going to have a slight crosswind out from the right here as well for the takeoff. So power is set, off the brakes. That's 60 knots. Fairly sensitive I would say on the rudder. And 100 knots back on the yoke. That wind straight away there trying to push us out to the left so we'll count for that. And we'll start a shallow bank here as well, out to the right, to take us away from the mountains. We do have positive climb, we'll tap the brakes. And the gear can come up. We'll just continue this turn out to the right. Up through 300 feet, so the flaps can come up. And you definitely feel that loss of lift as the flaps come in. Overall, I have to say, I think the flight model is much improved over the default King Air, at least since the last time that I flew it. for 140 knots up through 500 feet now so we'll come back to our climb power setting We're looking for 80 percent on the torque and 1600 rpm 500 disregard the rad out there just come over a little bit of high terrain obviously visually clear so climb power is set and aiming to climb away here at 140 knots We'll just make sure here that we keep a good look out the front till we're visually clear of the terrain and then we'll run through the climb checks. We're going to climb out towards the northwest here until we are clear of the mountains. Initially, as I say, out towards waypoint Sierra Papa, Oscar November 2. And once we're above around 5,000 feet, we should have enough altitude in hand there to turn back out towards the uh, east. Climbing, as I say, up to 11,000 feet. That's going to have us clear of the terrain en route. Yes, sir. I've got a uh, and a requirement for you. And the King Air, definitely quite left wing heavy here, having to use quite a bit of right aileron to keep us flying straight and level. We might just null that out a little bit with some aileron trim. So using about three clicks of aileron trim there, things feeling much better now. Just back off slightly there. So coming up through 3,000 feet, gear is up, flaps are up. Running through those climb checks so your damper can go on. We'll hold off on the autopilot for now. Quite enjoying hand flying the aircraft actually, it's very easy on the controls. Pretty stable as well. So your damper is on, condition levers can go to low idle. Vent blower is set to auto. Auto feather is checked on, prop sync is on. Engine auto ignitions can go off. Engine anti-ice is off, and again you can hear those actuators. Windshield anti-ice is set to normal. Cabin differential pressure 
is checked. And just now holding off on the rest of the climb checks till we come up through 10,000 feet. So we're just approaching our first waypoint. Again, we're going to continue to track out towards the west here until we've actually got ourselves up through 5,000 feet. Hands off the controls at the moment. You can see with the aircraft trimmed, it is very stable, quite nicely maintaining 150 knots here in the climb. Again, from what I've seen of the King Air so far, really enjoying the slight improvements to the flight model. It certainly makes the aircraft feel quite a bit better. So up through 5,000, we'll get the autopilot in. We'll come into heading. Autopilot master can go on. And just keep adjusting our power levers there to maintain 80% on torque. So as I say, we are now up through 5,000 feet, so we'll make our turn back out towards the east. Just coming around to the right. Second thing, it's going to get a again, 1905. Climb to 10,000 on Mary QNH, 1019. Course inbound towards waypoint 2087, so we'll set that on the course bar. It doesn't seem to happen automatically in the aircraft. I don't know whether or not that's true to life or just a little bit of fixing that needs actioning between the uh, TDS GTNXI and the aircraft. So, 087, come up through 7,000 feet. Speed looking good. We'll arm up the altitude. One thing I have noticed here, and again this may be a lack of familiarity on my part, but some of the modes don't seem to action as I would expect. For example there, you can see we haven't armed up the altitude. Same goes with IS hold, that doesn't seem to want to engage. We're going to climb, that does seem to affect things, so we've now got the out armed. Climbing on 11,000 feet. I'll have to read up on the manual a little bit more, as I say that may be uh, just a lack of familiarity on my part, but I would have thought we come into our IS there, it should engage IS hold. Anyway, tracking now inbound towards waypoint Ignet. We'll just come slightly further right here on the heading to rejoin our flight plan track, so heading of 100 degrees. Looks like we're climbing now at 160 knots, which is absolutely fine. It's a pretty short sector here, so we'll let the passengers up briefly. Fasten seatbelt signs can go off. And you can see exactly why I said this flight was going to be truly spectacular. I don't think it gets better than that in the sim. The scenery is absolutely stunning. New Zealand, as I've mentioned in previous videos, without doubt one of my favourite places to fly in the sim. A really beautiful country. And I think this route is just about one of the best that you can fly in the sim. I'm really enjoying the flight in the King Air so far. Once again, another flight that really showcases what Microsoft Flight Simulator is now capable of. Anyway, we've got plenty of time to enjoy the scenery once we're in the cruise, we'll just keep an eye on things for the time being. Just wait until we've got the CDI bar centred up here and then we'll go into NAV. So far I haven't found any issues with the autopilot, it seems to work pretty well. The aircraft does level off at the pre-selected altitude, it does follow a NAV track quite nicely. Getting a few bumps here off the terrain. With 80% on the torque, 1600 RPM, seem to be getting around 1000 feet per minute rate of climb. So there we are on our flight plan course, we're going to NAV. And we do have NAV armed. Again, just nudging up the power levers here as we climb to maintain 80%. In terms of our fuel flow, we're back at low idle of course, getting about 350 pounds per hour on each engine there. And in terms of our fuel state, down to around 800 pounds there on the left, 850 there on the right. We were idling for quite some time there down at the runway, so I was just sorting a couple of things out. As usual, we've got just a little bit of time to kill here, so we'll briefly take a look outside. Really only for the views, again, the Black Square King Air 350i uses the default Microsoft Flight Simulator external model. 
but nevertheless, I think that scenery deserves to be enjoyed, even if momentarily. So as I say, we'll head outside. We'll be descending very shortly, so we'll come back to the flight deck in just a moment's time. Okay, so we just came overhead waypoint up dam, now in the descent, coming through 10,000 feet, so landing lights can go on. Currently in vertical speed with a descent rate there of 1,500 feet per minute. We've just come back as well on the power levers to around 45% on the torque, just to maintain the speed below V&E. Aerodrome elevation is around 1,200 feet, descending down to 5,000 feet for the time being. We'll just come out slightly further to the right here on our heading. As I say, we're just going to descend visually here. We've got pretty good visual with the terrain. We're just going to have to negotiate our way through a little bit of cloud on the way down. We'll get the fasten seatbelt signs back on. And I'm running through the descent checks. Altimeters are set. Auto feather is on. Props are set to 1600. Flaps and landing gear are both checked up. Pure balance and quantities are checked. Altitude, we've got 5,000 set. Passenger briefing, not required. Coming signs are on. According to the checklist here, we come back to 180 knots for the descent. But we're just going to keep the speed for now, just to keep the flight time down a little bit. Autopilot descent mode has been set. Cabin pressure has been checked. Looks like that cabin pressure differential is coming down once again. And that's our descent checklist complete. No reported I-5 traffic. Thank you, thank you, Bravo. So we'll just use heading here to work our way through the cloud layer. As I say, we're just going to be following the lake around here, initially out towards the southeast and then coming back up towards the north, inbound towards Queenstown. And again, we are picking up a few returns here on the weather radar. Nice little rainbow down there as well, just off the lake. Really doesn't get much more beautiful than this in the sim, I'm sure you'll agree. So, 1200 feet, we said, is the aerodrome elevation. We'll descend down to 2700 feet. We'll fly our way in at 2700, and then once we're visual with the runway, we can take out the autopilot and we'll fly the rest of the approach manually. Just coming through the cloud layer. No need for any anti-icing systems. We've cleared most of the cloud. And we've now got a pretty nice clear visual run inbound towards Queenstown. I'm going to fly the approach fairly conservatively here. Certainly the default King Air has some real issues slowing down, although I haven't seen too much of that behaviour from the Black Square version so far. Nevertheless, we'll make sure we've got the altitude and speed in hand well ahead of time. Leaves off on that descent rate. We'll come back to around a thousand feet per minute. Lots of really nice details. For example, one click does give you a change of a hundred feet per minute. That may well be true to life for the real world aircraft, but I find often in the sim functionalities like that tend to be a bit of hit and miss, a bit of guesswork, and it's pretty straightforward in the back square king air. So 4,700, we've got 2,000 feet further here in the descent. And speed looking pretty good there, just doing about 210 knots currently. We can start slowing down once we come around the corner here, as we'll be on a uh, long final limb for runway 05. Call 
31, there should be a delay over here to send you cross into traffic. I will avoid it. Just slowly start bringing that heading bug around. We don't want to cut in too early here and bring ourselves over the high terrain unnecessarily. Thank you, Alvin. Yeah, just pass that down the line and then we'll talk to the next couple of sectors and Melbourne um, as well. Let's get back to you soon. Thank you, Alvin. Thanks for your Once again, the Black Square King Air, real joy to operate. Terrain ahead. Terrain ahead. Okay, we've got the terrain message there on the GTNXI. I think we'll inhibit the tours again for now. We are visual. We know we're coming towards some high terrain. There's 1,000 to go. Unity 865 for sequencing cross re on the hour. 25 zero enough to publish speed. Once again, we'll just ease up on that descent rate. So there's 500 feet per minute. And we're looking for runway 05, so we'll just set that here on the CDI bar. Just as a little bit of a reference. So we might as well do some manual flying at this point. We'll take out the autopilot. Lots of nice custom sounds there, as you can hear for yourselves. We'll get rid of the flight director there as well. Coming back up on the torque. We'll maintain the speed just a touch longer. Or at least broadly, we'll come back to around 180 knots. Uh, Aircraft just feeling a touch right wing heavy now, so we'll just take out some of that aileron trim. And visual with the runway now, so we'll start reducing the power, getting that speed back. We can cancel the uh, altitude alert there as well. So for the approach and landing checks, brakes are checked, parking brake is off, auto feather is armed, landing lights are on, engine anti-ice is on, and we'll just wait for the enunciated lights there. Velocity 733, contact approach, 1, 2, 3, 5, see ya. 1, 2, 3, 5, velocity 733. So left and right engine anti-ice is on. We'll hold the checklist there for the time being. We'll keep the props and the condition levers as is for now. Work our way through one step ahead there so the vent blower can go to low. And having to come up on the power levers again there. Now we've taken the engine anti-ice, we've lost a little bit of torque. So you should be able to see the runway now, it's off the nose. Just down at the end of the lake. We can take the gear below 170 knots, we're doing 170 knots right now. Approach flaps at 160, landing flap at 140. So again we'll come back off the power levers. Take the gear down. And once again the aircraft feels more reasonable in terms of speed. You can see with the drag there, the speed falling off, it's much easier to slow down than the default King Air. Again, since I last flew the default King Air, it's been some time since I have. So we've got uh, reversers not ready, that's again just as a function of the props being in their current position. You can disregard for now. Back to 160 knots, so we'll take approach flap. And once again, just cancelling that altitude alerter. Maintaining 150 knots for the time being. And for the rest of the approach checks then, props go to fully forward. Condition levers can go to high idle. Flavor, center, clearance, track, mossy, plan group, and we'll to 270. And we'll get that speed back below 140. Clear track, mossy, plan group, follow the 270, And then we'll go to landing flap. There's 140. You can see now the reverse is not ready. Caution's been extinguished. Slightly high here on the approach currently. Aiming to maintain 120 knots as we come down final approach. Or just above, keeping us above blue line. 
Should be coming back onto the Papi fairly shortly. Five hundred. Let's check five hundred. Actually showing six hundred there on the rad out. So three whites, one red there on the Papi. Just a touch low there on the speed, looking good now on profile. Again, the aircraft, really nice to hand fly. Getting a touch low, correcting for that. Slight headwind down runway 05. Off the power. Looks like we're going to float just a little bit long here. Quite long, in fact, so we'll go full reverse. Full reverse actually tends to pitch the nose up. I don't know whether or not that's accurate to the real world King Air. We can cancel that for now. Anyway, we'll just continue here down runway 05. We'll take the exit down at the end, Alpha, off on towards the taxiway. So there you go ladies and gents, we are wheels on the ground at Queenstown and hopefully you really enjoyed that outing in the Black Square Analog King Air. As usual there's just a couple more things I'd like to demonstrate to you and then we'll finish up the review with an overall debrief on the product. I'll give you my overall positives and negatives in terms of what we've seen here today. Firstly we'll take a brief look at the avionics configurations options on the aircraft. Again as with the caravan the aircraft is quite configurable in terms of avionics setup which is really nice to see. Firstly we have the more retro configuration, here we just have the weather radar and also the RNAV unit that was included with the caravan. I've still yet to have the chance to really look into that myself but certainly quite an interesting little unit. Essentially as I understand it you can use real world radio navigation aid coverage to set up pseudo waypoints in the unit and you can then use those waypoints to navigate from A to B either en route or flying an approach. From the footage that I have seen the unit seems to work pretty well and again it's a nice option, something a little bit different within the sim. If we want to take a step up in terms of aircraft navigational capabilities then we can fit a GNS 530 unit. This just makes use of the default GNS 530 though of course you can still upgrade that with the PMS GNS 530 mod. My preferred option the King Air can also be kitted out with the TDS GTNXI unit. As we've discussed in a couple of previous videos this is my own personal preferred unit within the sim. Again it is worth mentioning though that it is a payware unit so it doesn't come as standard with the aircraft. You can also fit out the PMS GTN 750 for which there is both a freeware and a payware variant. But certainly either of these units is going to go a long way to enhancing the overall navigational capabilities of the King Air. And lastly if that's still not enough for you, you can also fit out the King Air with both the GTN 750 and the GNS 530. Hidden within the Bendix RDR 1150, the unit also doubles up as a maintenance and failures menu. Firstly we have the engine conditions indicated and the engines will actually wear down over time particularly if you operate them outside of their limits. There is also some basic maintenance functionality in terms of repairing the engines, refilling the oxygen system and resetting all failures. One of the areas where I think the product really shines is the failure modelling. Firstly we can choose to set random failures based on a global failure rate. You can choose real time or you can increase or decrease to your liking. Random failures are hopefully pretty self-explanatory. In terms of the scheduled failures, you can choose an aircraft system and have it fail within a specific time frame. We'll briefly take a look at that now, so we'll take a look at a right-hand engine fire and we'll discuss more about the scenario as we go. Okay, so we are back here on the ground in Milford Sound. We're going to simulate an engine failure here just to demonstrate some of the failure modeling and systems modeling. So once again, part brake off, we'll hold the aircraft on the brakes.
Uh, power is set, brakes released. So we've got a scheduled failure that should occur within one to two minutes after we're airborne. There's 60 knots. And 100, so just coming back on the yoke. Time away nicely, the gear can come up. We'll start that right turn once again. Coming up through 300 feet, so the flaps can come up. Again, feeling that Terrain loss of ahead. lift. Pull up. Terrain ahead. Pull up. We'll inhibit tours once again, pitching for 140. And coming back to our climb power setting. Okay, so we do have a master warning. You can see it's a right engine fire running through our checks then. Condition lever on the right, which is confirmed, can go back to idle cutoff. You can see there the aircraft really wanting to roll out to the right there as we do so. And the aircraft a little bit of a handful initially actually with the engine out. Come up on the live engine. And again, just picking our way here through the terrain. So the condition lever is in the cutoff position. We'll feather the prop. You have to excuse the alarm for now. I just want to leave that running again just to demonstrate the failure. So the prop is now feathered. Fire shut off valve or firewall shut off valve. We can push. You can see that's now closed. And lastly, the fire extinguisher is now discharged. Cancelling the alarm there. And you can see we do have the engine shut down. Let's bring it back into the feather position again. I think the lever's come up there as a result of my hardware position. So the prop is feathered. Nice little animation there as well. Still a little bit of movement. Still needing quite a lot of right rudder currently to keep the ball centred up. Even with that prop feathered. And we got to around 100% there. Torque on the live engine. Doing about 150 knots here. More or less straight and level. But again, really nice to see the failure implementation. Nice as well to see the systems modelling. And you can have both random and scheduled failures, as we discussed just a moment ago. Another really nice feature of the Analog King Air, the aircraft also comes with working windshield wipers. Not only are the wipers themselves animated, but they do actually clear precipitation off the windshield. One of only two add-ons currently available in the sim. Hats off to Black Square on that one, it really goes to show that they put that extra level of attention to detail into the product. And at the same time here, also demonstrating to you the night lighting within the cockpit, which as you can see is done very nicely. There are a multitude of lighting options with numerous rear stats, all of which can be adjusted incrementally. Anyway, that is just about all I've got to show for you here today in terms of the product features. As usual, we'll just round up the review, I'll give you my overall thoughts on the product. Starting with the negatives, and I have to say I didn't really come across any deal breakers with the Analog King Air. Most of my negative points are fairly minor in nature, but we'll run through those for the sake of interest. Firstly, in terms of entering the passenger cabin, I had a pretty good go of it with the default cockpit camera controls. I also checked to see whether or not there were specific passenger cams available. I couldn't find any way of actually getting into the passenger cabin. It may be that that's intentional, it may be that there's an issue that needs fixing up. Either way though, it seems a little bit of a shame since Black Square have clearly spent quite a bit of time visually modelling the passenger cabin. It's not a huge deal of course, but it would have been nice to be able to get into the passenger cabin without having to use the drone cam. My next negative, it would be a little bit redundant to say, of course the aircraft does use the default King Air 350 external model, and Black Square are very upfront about this. Overall, personally I find the external model to be very adequate, although again it does mean no opening doors, and I did notice throughout the flight the prop disc animation there doesn't look great under certain lighting conditions. I would only note that as a minor negative though, as again, Black Square are very clear about what the product does and doesn't offer. Just before we do move on to the positives, I feel as though there are a couple of items that fit somewhat into a middle ground, so we'll discuss those as well. Firstly, the aircraft sounds, once again making use of the default King Air 350i sound set. I think that that sound pack is pretty good overall. I don't know how accurate it is versus the real aircraft, but it holds up well enough. What's really nice to see though is that Black Square have added a lot of custom sounds to the King Air as well, and it certainly makes the aircraft feel that much more realistic. The flight model I'm also going to put into the positives but worth noting here that again Black Square are very upfront about the fact that the Analog King Air includes only minor improvements to the default King Air 350's flight model. So again just be advised of that you're not getting a study level flight model necessarily although I do feel that the changes Black Square have made 
really go to improve the way that the King Air feels to fly. The aircraft does also come with a persistent state, meaning that systems will remain in the same position you left them from a previous flight. Currently, it's a little bit hit and miss in terms of what's covered, so some systems are persistent, others aren't. Again, not a big issue, but it does just make getting into the aircraft that little bit more confusing when some systems have saved and others haven't. So it would be nice to see a more comprehensive implementation of the persistent state. Black Square did actually improve the caravan in that regard, I believe, so hopefully they'll do the same as well with the King Air. Lastly, touching on the product's FPS, I was getting about 56 frames per second with the Analog King Air versus about 78 in the default Cessna 152 under the same conditions. So dropping about 22 frames overall, a fairly significant frame rate hit there, but certainly to be expected given the level of fidelity in terms of the aircraft systems. On to my positives then, and starting by saying overall I think that the Analog Caravan is a really excellent product. I really enjoyed the outing in the aircraft and I was actually pleasantly surprised to see just how much depth was there, even having tried the Caravan not too long ago. For me, the King Air rather blows the Caravan out of the water and it's not to say that the Caravan was a bad product by any stretch. I think with it just being a slightly more complex aircraft, it really shows off the amount of work that Black Square do put into these products. And I suppose as well, this product is rather filling in a niche within Microsoft Flight Simulator. Up until now, of course, we didn't really have any high fidelity twin turbo props within the sim. The main strength of the Analog King Air is of course the aircraft systems. They are done to an incredibly high level of detail. We've only really just had the chance to touch the surface here today in terms of the aircraft's normal operations. If you do want to get an even greater appreciation for the level of systems fidelity included, just flight themselves actually have a very good video on the product. I'll leave a link to that up above. By and large though, the systems modeling is very much quote unquote study level. It's clear that an absolute ton of work has been put into modeling the aircraft systems and indeed the analog gauges. And the aircraft's failure system really goes to enhance all of that fidelity, really allowing you to get the most out of the product. Just to give you a brief idea of the level of systems depth, for example, there are 175 random or scheduled failures available. The entire aircraft electrical system is modeled, including circuit breakers. The meters accurately respond to all loads placed on the buses. The same goes for the aircraft's environmental control system, again, fully modeled. Turbine dynamics have also been improved, which is great to see, as that's an area that sorely still needs addressing within the sim. And on top of that, custom propeller governor and auto feather logic have been programmed into the aircraft. But again, overall, as you will hopefully have seen throughout the flight and my demonstration there at the end of the video, the King Air really does have exceptional systems and failure modelling. Once again, in regard to the systems then, absolutely no qualms with calling the Analog King Air a study level product. Touching on a couple of other areas of the aircraft though, I think again, overall the engine's not quite study level in terms of their modelling, they're just building upon the default Microsoft Flight Simulator implementation, although the additions are certainly welcome. The same goes with the flight model. Once again, Black Square are very upfront about the fact that there are only minor alterations to the flight model. Nevertheless, as we discussed previously, I think the alterations they've made go a long way towards improving the aircraft. Overall, I actually really enjoyed hand flying the King Air. It was good fun to fly. It felt about right. The aircraft definitely felt as though it had a bit more weight to it. Very stable overall, easy to trim. It did also require some trim based on engine power setting. Definitely none of the issues that I recall with the default King Air in terms of losing speed on the approach. The aircraft seemed to behave broadly correctly in terms of its performance numbers, its drag, things of that nature. Still a little bit skitterish perhaps on the rudder, particularly during the takeoff. And a bit of a handful initially during the engine out scenario there, quite wallowy in terms of how the aircraft behaved. But that being said, the King Air still felt pretty good overall in terms of that engine out scenario, definitely wanting to drop the right wing pretty quickly there when we lost the engine. Just about controllable, but certainly quite a handful and needing very prompt and positive input there on the rudder. The way the aircraft flew was actually noticeably different as well between having the prop feathered and unfeathered. And once again, the behaviour seemed reasonable in terms of having to keep the speed above blue line to maintain rudder authority and only maintaining around 150 knots there on the single engine. One thing that we've yet to touch on, and I suppose we really ought to, although I've been rather caught up with the systems fidelity so far, the analog gauges themselves, of course, very nice. They're very smooth in their operation, very clear, very easy to read. I much prefer the aesthetic of the 350 personally with the analog gauges. And again, Black Square have been pretty meticulous in modelling all of the equipment on board the aircraft. I couldn't find anything that wasn't clickable. I believe, again, as with the caravan, all of the placards, all of the texturing and materials that you'll see in the cockpit are as per a real aircraft. And briefly touching on the modelling and texturing whilst we're on the subject. Once again, internally, both the texturing and the modelling, absolutely excellent. Externally, you will just be getting that default King Air model. As far as the liveries go, you only get three with the package and they're all a variation of the same scheme. Although, as we saw with the Analog Caravan, you will also be able to make use of third-party liveries available for the default aircraft. However, doing so will require a little bit of work on your part, renaming some folder structures and things of that nature. 
Anyway, to conclude, once again, the Black Square King Air is an upgrade to the default King Air 350i. And as such, it might not be to everybody's taste, but certainly for me, I think what the product does, it does exceptionally well. Initially, I did think I might have my reservations about the product in terms of its price point versus what it's offering. Obviously, at this point, we have seen a number of full fidelity study level add-ons available for the sim, some of which actually costing slightly less even here than the King Air. So whilst in some respects it would be a little bit tricky to say whether or not the price point is justified per se, what I can say though is that overall I was very impressed with what the product has to offer. And had I purchased the product for myself, I certainly wouldn't have had any regrets. So far I'm really happy with and really enjoying the Analog King Air overall. On that particular note, thank you very much to JustFlight once again for letting us take an early access look at the product. Hopefully the video here today has been of use to you and you enjoyed our outing in the Analog King Air. Once again, if you did, please consider giving the video a like. If you want to see more content from the channel, then please consider subscribing as well. As ever, a huge thank you to my channel members and patrons for all of your support. It is very much appreciated. The Analog King Air should be releasing within the coming days, although once again, Sim Update 10 may push that process back ever so slightly. In the meantime, though, I do hope that all of you are enjoying the most recent Sim Update. Take really good care, and I will see you all again soon.